gorgeous. Today, I'm going to be reacting to Jethro Tull with Locomotive Breath. I have never heard of either of those things until Doug vehemently suggested them. I know about some kinds of breath, like diaphragmatic. I didn't do any research because I find that it's just sometimes more fun to be surprised. And should you happen to be new here today, you could surprise me for free by subscribing to the channel. I would be like, what a nice surprise. If you do decide to help me in my quest to deliver scientifically accurate vocal education and fun to the world, please accept this tickle on the nose as a token of my gratitude. <laughs> Oh, if you want your headphones to work, then you got to plug them in. And make sure they're not too loud. <laughs> oh, he's going for it. Was that a flute? He just waved at me there. I'm gonna get my flute to wave at him back. We may continue. Charlie, we stole the anthem When the train won't stop going Going to slow down Hey! Whoa! Oh, everything about this just is... Dirty. In a good way. This song has been given permission to be as chaotic as it is because at the moment we haven't really changed chord. It's just E. Forever. There's a little segue between some of the E's. But then it's just back on E. And when you keep the chord the same, if that part of it is simple, then of course you have license to go nuts, to explore everything that can live within that chord. All the scalic runs, they can really let rip. They have very much taken advantage of said license. And the energy that they've managed to harvest from that is quite captivating. It seems like every time he does some kind of backwards vowel, like an ah, it's very twangy. And then when he does a forward vowel, like ooh, it's very dropped. So we get this fluctuating kind of effect, which is... It is what it is. I don't really know how to describe that. It's, um, it's groovy. It's groovy. It's groovy. If you've got a melody that needs to travel, like, ah, you're going to have a higher chance of doing that accurately if you place the top notes, ah, back in this twangy sound. When it feels a business gravy, steam breaking on his brow. And the bottom notes, ooh, in this more forward sound, ah, ah, because the vocal positions are so drastically different, your voice feels like it has room to travel and it's less likely to get all uh, blurry on the way down. He is also singing with quite a bit of nasal resonance. A lot of his sound is being reflected through his nose. When it feels a 
But don't be fooled. Nasal resonance is not synonymous with twang. Twang is an effect that happens down here. I can resonate twang out of my mouth or out of my nose. Twang is attracted to your nose. So they are often heard together. Twang and your nose is like the opposite of an open throat and your mouth. <laughs> but you can absolutely also sing with twang and have it come out of your mouth, which is perhaps reminding you of musical theater because they do that. Oh, oh, he's using my absolute most favoritist flute technique here. It's called flutter tongue. And all you need to do for that is, you guessed it, one must toot the flute while one flutters the tongue. That one being the same person, naturally. The really cool thing about flutter tongue and why I love it so much is because it sounds really different depending on whether you play high or low. Because when you play low, the reflections just create a really different ambient. It's super, I don't know, it's more fluttery. Your tongue is doing this. So with every tiny flutter of the tongue, the breath gets chopped up. I'm still yet to understand what a locomotive breath truly is. But breath is an interesting subject for today because a lot of the techniques you will learn as a flautist are very transferable to singing. For example, to create a vibrato in the flute is controlled diaphragmatically, which means the breath flow gives us those bends in pitch. And we can also use that same diaphragmatic vibrato approach to our voice. That was a lovely example of superior breath control. We had those staccato notes, which performed by a very short, sharp burst of air. And then he went into a lovely smooth legato phrase, which requires a continuous stream of air. But the really tricky thing about flu and obviously loads of wind instruments, if you want to move between octave one and octave two, you just have to blow harder and tighten your lips. And that takes a lot of practice to move the belly in and out and in and out. But it can most certainly benefit a singer if they have a fluty background from the breath control perspective and from developing that relationship with your breath, which is very important if you want to express character in your voice, to be able to give someone something really powerful and then take it away and then give it back to them. I kind of hid behind my flute for a while because I was very, very shy as a child, way too shy to open my mouth and sing. But I could be creative just by having this little thing with me. This, by the way, is the same flute that I've had since I was six. This is very hard to play now. Good work, rock and roll, fabulous flutey man. Would that be Jethro himself or is that the name of the band? Please do let me know in the comments. I thought when I was a kid that Pink Floyd was the name of a person. So... Anyway. If there's a silent howling when he catches angels as they fall. And the all time winner. It's gonna be the house got in five balls. When it picks up his fiber. Yes, it's open at page one. A finger god, he stole the handle. And a pain who was stopped going over to. Oh, <laughs>
You know who this reminds me of, don't you? Blimey, the head's gonna fall off that poor flute in a minute. It's been horizontal, vertical, left, right. It's using it like a bloody lightsaber. I still don't think we've moved away from this E chord actually, but that's fabulous. It also allowed Flute Man to do a very expressive and free solo. Good choice. No way to <laughs> it swells it like a baton! That must be on really tight! Oh my god, it's like a fringe! Because this comes off, and so does this, with very little effort. So, I don't know. I don't know what, what kind of sorcery that is. Maybe it's because this flute is 10 million years old, <laughs> actually. I've never had a new flute, so I don't know, but still! <laughs> distracted because it really looks like a boob. I'm trying to get into it but I can't because I just keep and, and especially in that frame it has a literal nipple. Hang on sorry I just couldn't, just couldn't keep that in anymore but anyway now I've stopped I might as well <laughs> expand on other thoughts that are less immature. So the harmony is now much more varied. There's lots of chord changes. We've got this rather sinister riff that was coming in. Da -da -da, da -da -da -da. You might recognize those intervals. That's like a major second. Oh, there she goes. <laughs> Especially because there's been two. finished there with what we call a trill and you can use these little things on the flute called trill keys for certain notes this was absolutely electrifying magnetizing five out of five would wave my flute to again i'm not surprised at all to hear such a ferocious roar from the audience because they really bloody gave them a good time they put their absolute everything into that the bass player was terrific the drummer was terrific they were able to switch in and out of grooves all the time <laughs> but they also managed to keep us inside those grooves, which is a very difficult thing to do. You have to be extremely, extremely proficient and confident in your instrument to have that kind of flexibility. So if I were to get all analytical on you, I would maybe say that the idea of keeping it 
steady harmonically for like the most of it is this locomotive this train just training away and at the end maybe the train derails and the harmony gets wild I'm most intrigued now to check out more of Jethro Tull's work, more of their songs, and see if they also have strong concepts like the one I just hypothesized that it might have. <laughs> I'm just very excited about his use of the flute, an instrument that is most commonly associated with orchestral music and jazz in a 100% unquestionable rock performance. I wish I saw this when I was a kid, learning flute, so that I didn't feel like a flute nerd. I could have felt like a rock star instead. Oh well, we're here now. Let's read out today's oracle card before I love you and leave you until the next video. What would happen if you turned your light all the way on? Can you even conceive what would happen if you didn't dial things down? How's about you ramp up those amps all the way up, you beauty. And if those fuckers don't need to wear shades, you are still hiding. Shine. Ah. Couldn't agree more. Thank you ever so much for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making it. If there are any singers you would like to see me analyze, please do let me know down below in the comments as it is always my complete pleasure. If you're here with me at the premiere, then big premiere hug to you. If you're here at any other time, a big hug to you too. I hope you have a wonderful day. I love you very much. And I can't wait to see you again in the next video. Mwah. Bye. Because it is perfectly dirty. <laughs> that was a lovely example of superior. Superior. <laughs> because. <laughs> so, <laughs> the flutter tongue has a lot more. So it's less suggestive and more affirmed. Things.